Hello, this is the continuation of the previous video I uploaded earlier. So, sana napanood nyo na yung video about common problems in entrance exam. Ito yung pang-anin na problem. So, sana napanood nyo na yun. Number 6 na tayo. Continue. Patrick has a rectangular patio whose length is 5 meters less than the diagonal and the width that is 7 meters less than the diagonal. If the area of his patio is 195 square meters, what is the length of the diagonal? Okay, try nyo muna. Pause yung video and pili yung tamang sagot. And after, see my solution. So, ito na nga. Paano ba natin ito masasolve? Sabi daw, Patrick is a rectangular patio. Ano ba yung patio? Pamilya lang sa akin, pero hindi ko siya na-search. Kayo na lang. Assignment ko na yan sa inyo. Basta meron tayong rectangular patio. Meron tayong rectangle. Tapos, whose length is 5 meter less than the diagonal. Ano ba yung diagonal? Ang diagonal dito sa rectangle is eto. Connect po yung dalawang hindi magkasunod na vertex. Tapos yung length, ito yung length na mahaba, ito yung width, di ba? Tapos sabi daw, yung length is 5 meters less than the diagonal. Hindi muna tayo. Yung length daw is 5 less than the diagonal. Ito yung diagonal. Let's say tawagin natin yung diagonal na D. Therefore, etong length, this is D minus 5, right? Kasi nga, 5 less than the diagonal. Kung ang diagonal D, ang length, D minus 5. Right? Next. And a width that is 7 meters less than the diagonal. Ang diagonal D, therefore, ang width natin is D minus 7. ba? Kasi 7 meter less than the diagonal. Now, if the area of this patio, itong rectangular, is 195 square meter, what is the length of the diagonal? So, ang hinahanap sa problem na to is etong diagonal or etong dininote natin as D. Solve for D given itong area ng patio. So, ano yung next na gagawin natin para makuha yung D? Gamitin natin itong area ng given. Now, isa sa property ng rectangle, kapag gumawa tayo ng diagonal, yung rectangle ay makahati sa dalawang equal parts. Etong kalahate, ay equal dito sa kalahate. Equal sila. Therefore, kung ang area nitong buong rectangle is 195, ano yung area nitong maliit na itong triangle, itong kalahate? That is, yung area, tawagin natin triangle, kasi triangle na to, right triangle na yan, that is 195 over 2. Ito na yung area nitong kalahate. And now, given ito, Isosolve natin si D. Paano natin masolve si D? Meron tayong right triangle. Ano nga yung formula sa area ng right triangle? That is 1 half A times B. Itong A and B are the legs of the right triangle. Focus tayo dito sa right triangle. And since alam natin yung area nito, eto, nakuha natin. That is 195 over 2. Substitute lang natin sa A. Tapos 1 half a and B, itong dalawang legs. Kahit alin sa dalawa yung A or B. Let's say, ito yung A, ito yung B. So, magiging D minus 5. D minus 7. And, solving for B, ang gawin natin first, multiply both sides by 2. Kasi ito makakancel, ito makakancel, di ba? So, dito na tayo sa taas. Burahin ko muna. So, magiging 195 na lang dito. Tapos dito, ito na lang matitira. D minus 5 times D minus 7. And, ano yun natin? Foil method or big method. Para sa akin, big method. So, pwede na natin tuburahin. Basta nakakasunod pa kayo. So, magiging big method. Ito muna. Magiging D squared. So, not ito, d times negative 7, that is negative 7d. And dito naman, negative 5d. Multiply lang. 
and plus negative 5 times negative 7, that is positive 35. Pasensya na kung may umiyak sa baba. So, magiging ganito. Big method siya kasi parang tuka. Ito muna, tapos ito muna. Or pwede rin foil method. Depende sa inyo kung ano yung mas madali. Ito, kung by like terms, magiging minus 12D. And, next, ito 195, ilipat natin sa kabila, magiging minus 195 yan. So, magiging d squared minus 12d magiging minus. Kasi ito, mas, ma mas malaki dito. So, magiging 35 minus 195, that is negative ilan? Negative 160. Right? Tama ba? Okay. Now, meron tayong quadratic factor natin. Pwede ba itong ma-factor? Isip tayo ng dalawang numbers na ang product is negative 60, ang sum is negative 12. Ito yung product. Ano yung dalawang numbers? Yung dalawang numbers ay negative 20 and positive 8, di ba? Negative 20 times 8 is negative 160. Pag inad mo yung dalawa, negative 20 plus 8, that is negative 12. Therefore, magiging Pag finactor yan natin, magiging D minus 20 times D plus 8. Diba? Sana marunong tayo mag-factor ng quadratic equation. And next, since na-factor natin, equate each to 0. So magiging D minus 20 is equal to 0. Then solve for D. Ikabila lang natin, magiging positive 20. Ito yung isa. And ito kapag in-equate natin sa 0, makukuha natin D is equal to negative 8. Ang tanong, alin yung sagot sa dalawa? Since D is side, wala namang side na negative, therefore, ito yung sagot natin sa D. And siya yung minahanap, therefore, ito yung final answer natin. So, I hope nakuha nyo. Another solution to this could be Gamitan natin ng Pythagorean Theorem. etong right triangle, yung a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. Ito yung a, ito yung b, ito yung c. Pero, trinay ko tong Pythagorean Theorem. And, hindi siya nag-work. So, kinumpare ko yung dalawang sagot and yung sa multiple choice, ito lang yung tumugma. So, ito na lang yung ginawa kong solution. Yung Pythagorean Theorem, etong right triangle, hindi siya not work. Therefore, maging wise tayo sa ating sagot. Ayan na. Number 7. What should be multiplied to a squared minus ab plus b squared so that the product is a binomial? Okay, try nyo. And after that, see my solution. Gamitan natin ang red since medyo mahina na yung black marker ko. So, paano ba natin ito masasagot? Ano ba yung i-multiply natin dito para yung product is binomial? Pag sinabi natin binomial, two terms. Two terms lang yung expression. So, paano ba yan? Ganto. Kung familiar tayo sa sum of two cubes, lagay natin, sum of two cubes, Makikita natin tong etong expression doon. So sum of two cubes yung formula. A cube plus B cube. Sum of two cubes kasi sum siya ng dalawang cubes. Yung ano nito, pwede natin ito ma-factor or ma-rewrite as A plus B multiplied by A squared minus AB plus B squared. And kung makikita nyo dito sa formula, Ito ay eksaktong eksakto Ito Tapos Kapag multiply mo siya ng A plus B Ang kalalabasan ay Two terms lang A cube plus B cube Naging binomial yung product Therefore Ito Pimultiply natin siya by A plus B Para makakuha tayo ng product na binomial Therefore Ang final answer natin is Letter B 
Yan yung answer natin. And sabihin ko na rin, i-review natin yung isa pa. Difference of two cubes. Ito sum of two cubes. Yung difference of two cubes. Dapat huwag natin kalimutan yung mga basic formulas. We have a cube minus b cube. Difference of two cubes kasi difference of two cubes. Naka-cube. So ang formula nito, para kamukha lang nito, a minus b, a squared plus ab plus b squared. Anong pinagkaiba? Ito plus, 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 minus. Minus, 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 plus. Magkaiba. So itong dalawa, huwag natin ito kakalimutan. Yan. Number 8. The elements of the sequence 1, 3, 6, 10, 15, 21, etc. are called triangular numbers. Which of the following statements are true? Ito yung mga statements. Roman numeral number 1. 55 is a triangular number. Second, the n triangular number tn is given by t sub n is equal to n times n plus 1 all over 2. And yung pangatlo, the sum of two consecutive triangular numbers is a perfect square. And eto yung mga choices. Napaka-common na type ng question. Yung may mga Roman numeral. Paano ba natin ito masasolve? Gagawin natin. By the way pala, itry nyo muna. And after, eto na yung solution. Ang tanong, which of the following are true? Tapos, eto yung sequence. Ang gawin natin, isa-isay natin itong nasa Roman numeral. Dito sa sa una, 55 is a triangular number. So, paano ba natin masasabi na 55 is a triangular number? Ilista muna natin yung given na sequence. 1, 3, 6, 10, 15, 21, etc. Ang gagawin natin first is, identify natin yung pattern nito. Ang pattern is, kung mapapansin natin, try natin plus 2, magiging 3. Ito plus 3, plus 4, tapos sunod, plus 5, magiging 15, plus 6. Napakadali ng pattern. So, magiging ito plus 2, ito plus 3, plus 4, plus 5, plus 6, etc. Plus 7, plus 8, and so forth. So, ngayon, yung 55 ba ay kasalo na dito? Ang gagawin natin, magdagdag tayo ng mga terms. So, gawin natin, sunod natin is plus 7. So, magiging pag plus 7, magiging 21 plus 7, that is 28. Next, plus 8 na tayo, that is 36, right? Next, plus 9. 36 plus 9, that is 45, di ba? Next, Plus 10, magiging 55. Therefore, 55 is a triangular number. So, check natin yan. Pangalawang Roman numeral. The n triangular number, t sub n is given by etong formula. Ang gawin natin, itest natin to dito sa sequence na given. Etong n, eto yung number of terms. Or kung pangkila na terms. Kunwari, eto, eto yung ang n niya is 1. Ang n niya is 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. Yan yung mga n natin. So, ang gagawin natin, i-check natin. I-try natin n is equal to 3. So, dapat ang sagot natin, 6. Gamit ito. So, t sub sub 3. Itong formula, gamitin natin. Magiging 3 multiplied by 3 plus 1, that is 4, over 2. Ito, divide mo yung dalawa, magiging 2. 3 times 2, that is 6. Therefore, nag-ano siya, nag, nag-satisfy siya. Another naman, what if n is equal to 5? So, n is equal to 5, dapat ito yung makuha natin. So, magiging t sub 5 natin. Gamit lang yung formula na to. 5 times 6 over 2. 6 over 2, that is 3. 5 times 3, that is 15. Therefore, tama. Another naman, kunwari dito, 5, 6, 7, 8. Kunwari naman, n is equal to 8. So, magiging 8 times 7, ulit. 
8 times 9, so magiging 8 divided by 2, that is 4. 4 times 9, that is 36. Therefore, tama. And kahit itry niyo pa kahit alin dyan, magsasatisfy siya. Therefore, check din natin yan. And yung last, the sum of two consecutive triangular numbers is a perfect square. Pag sinabi natin perfect square, pwede natin siya isulat as, kunwari, a squared yan. Where a is the base, tapos naka square. Kunwari, 49. 49 is a perfect square, kasi pwede natin siya isulat as, 7 squared, di ba? 36 is a perfect square, kasi pwede natin siya isulat as, 6 squared, right? 25, 5 squared. Yun yung mga perfect square. Dito sabi, yung sum daw ng two consecutive triangular numbers is perfect square. Pag sinabing consecutive triangular numbers, magkasunod. Ito yung mga triangular numbers natin, try natin. Yung sum daw ng dalawang magsa, magkasunod ay perfect square. 1 plus 3, 4. 4 is a perfect square. Ito naman, 3 plus 6, that is 9. 9 is a perfect square. Kunwari naman ito, 15 plus 21, that is 36. 36 is a perfect square. Kunwari naman dito, 21 plus 28, that is 49. 49 is a perfect square. Therefore, itry nyo kahit alin dyan, magsasatisfy siya. Therefore, lahat to true. Ito yung final answer natin. Number 9. A farmer borrowed 100,000 pesos from a cooperative with an annual simple interest rate of 10%. What is the amount the farmer owes after 2 years? Okay, try and after, see my solution. Meron tayong simple interest. Sabi daw yung farmer ay nag-borrow ng 100,000 pesos from a cooperative. And hinahanap yung amount ng farmer, yung amount ng nautang ng farmer after 2 years. So, since merong simple interest rate yan, yung 100,000 mag-grow. Now, ano ba yung formula sa simple interest? Yung formula sa simple interest is interest is equal to PRT. Ano yung P? Ano yung R? Ano yung T? Yung P yung principal. Sulat natin. etong principal, eto yung binaro or minsan eto yung deposit sa bank. Yung rate, ito yung interest rate. Interest rate. Tapos, dapat naka-decimal siya. And itong T, ito yung in years. Huwag natin ito kalimutan, interest formula. Simple interest. Now, paano ba natin makukuha yung amount ng nautang ng farmer after 2 years? So, yung amount ng nautang niya after 2 years ay... Tawagin na natin future value or maturity value. Ito na lang, FB, future value of the money will be the principal plus the interest, right? Ito yung principal, yung inutang niya, yung interest, yung patong. So, magiging P plus, itong formula ay, substitute natin dito, PRT, and Parehas may P, factor out natin yung P, magiging 1 plus RT. And, substitute, ilan yung P, yung principal, yung binaro, 100 K, 1 plus, ano yung R? 10% interest rate, pero dapat nakadecimal siya. 10% is equal to 0 0.10 or 0 0.1. Lagi na lang dito. 0 0.1 or 0 0.10 times yung T in years, that is 2. So, compute na lang natin. Magiging 1 plus 0 0.1 times 2, that is 0 0.2. So, magiging 100,000 times 1.2, di ba? So, 1.2 times 100,000, that is 120,000 pesos. And, Ito na yung final answer natin. Huwag natin kalimutan to interest na formula, simple interest, and yung future value, yung principal plus interest, letter C. Let me know in the comment section kung tama yung sagot mo. Number 10. 
How many positive roots are there in x to the fourth minus 3x cubed minus 5x squared plus nx plus c is equal to 0? Okay, try nyo muna and choose the correct answer. Paano ba natin ito masasagutan? Sabi daw, ilan yung positive roots netong quartic polynomial equation? Kukunin ba natin mano-mano yung yung roots niyan like gamit tayo ng factoring skills etc. Hindi na. Ano yung gagawin natin? And by the way pala, kapag sinabi natin positive roots that pertains to real roots and complex roots. Now, paano natin makuha yung positive roots niyan? Gamit natin yung tinatawag na Descartes rule of sign. Ano ba tong Descartes rule of sign? Ito yung ginagamit para makuha yung positive roots and negative roots ng polynomial equation without computing it manually. Paano ba ito gamitin yung Descartes rule of sign? Ganito, kunwari meron tayong ax to the fourth minus bx cubed plus c x squared plus dx minus e is equal to 0. Paano ba yan? Ganito. Kapag positive roots yung inahanap natin, lagay natin dito. Kapag meron tayong magkasunod na sign na magkaiba, opposite sign, eto, di ba, positive to. Kapag meron tayong magkasunod na different sign, positive negative, negative positive, ikakount natin siya as one positive root. So, one positive root, another, eto, Negative positive, another positive root. So, meron na tayong dalawa. And dito, hindi. And yung last, eto. Positive, negative, one root then Therefore, meron tayong 1, 2, 3. 3 positive roots nitong quartic equation. Ganyan lang gamitin itong Descartes rule of sign. So, kapag may magkasunod na parehas yung sign, positive, positive, or negative, negative, hindi natin siya ikakount as one positive root. So, magiging ito, di ba, this is positive, therefore, 1, positive root. Ito hindi, kasi parehas. Ito, pangalawa, and wala na, kasi parehas na dyan, positive. Therefore, meron tayong 2 positive roots. Nag-guess nyo ba? Okay. What if naman negative roots yung hinahanap? Negative roots, ang gawin lang natin, Para makuha yung negative roots ng polynomial equation is i-replace natin all x with negative x. Kunwari, eto, para makuha yung negative roots, lahat ng x, palitan natin ng negative x and simplify natin and do what we did in the positive roots. Same na siya ng concept. Pero, in this case, negative roots na siya. Positive, negative, one count. Negative, positive, one count. And kapag magkaparehas yung magkasunod, hindi siya ikakount ng one negative root. Ulit, kapag positive root, direkta ka na. Bilangin mo yung magkasunod. Kapag positive root, direkta. Makukuha mo na agad yung positive roots. However, sa negative roots, i-replace mo na lahat ng x with negative x and simplify and after simplifying, gawin lang natin kung ano yung ginawa natin sa positive roots. Count natin yung magkaibang sign, count 1, and yung parehas, hindi. So, huwag natin kalimutan tong Descartes Rule of Sign.